Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hey, I hear you. Yes, I hear you. <laughs> you can hear me. Yes. yes. Holy hell. That was a pain in my butt. I am sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Try turning your phone sideways. See if we can get a... There we go. That's much better. I'm having to do this outside and in the barn. I've got goats out grazing, so <laughs> I'm having to keep an eye on them. Oh, well, we I can am... always try for a better time if you want, but I mean, I'm ready if you are. Oh, no, I'm ready. I'm supposed to go put this thing on a stand. I'm just walking in the barn where it's a little warmer. Whew. So I am so sorry about the mix up this morning. It has been really crazy with my mother-in-law and everything else, so I do apologize. I understand. Life is uh, one thing after another, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it is. So, all righty. was looking at all your pictures and your story here you're one of the few people that gave me a good synopsis up front but i'd still like to let you do the talking uh to give us a little bit about it but i found it very interesting you've you've been through a lot uh why don't you, why don't I, you take us from the beginning like you kind of did in the, the email you sent me so starting well when i met my husband i was 130 pounds and i was that way all through high school and I really didn't start gaining weight until I got pregnant, uh, 22. Yeah. And then I had everybody telling me, Hey, you know, you just eat and enjoy You're eating for two. I took that literal. I ate enough for two grown men and I gained up to like, I think I was 236 pounds when I went into the hospital to deliver my daughter. So I had gained a hundred pounds. How big was um, she when she was born? Seven pounds. Okay. Well, you gained 93 so, pounds. <laughs> Let you out of the seven in there. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to lose a big portion of the weight within six months or six weeks. I think I was down to 190. Um, within six months, I dropped to 170. I was 40 pounds off of my goal weight. You know, she was still infant. And how did you do that back then? I just, it just come off. Okay. I was active and I was young. So it just fell off. Um, I was very healthy. I mean, there was nothing wrong with me. Um, for after my daughter was born, I guess about six months, I had an implant put into my arm, birth control implant. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know it at the time, but it started messing up with my hormones. Yeah. And then we lost my dad. And when I would go back to, you know, talk to the doctor, all he would tell me is, you just need to see a psychiatrist. You're just depressed. No, I'm not. Yeah. Um, I'm gaining. I was, I started gaining weight like crazy. I wasn't eating a lot and, but I was gaining fast. You and mentioned I'll, that you did have some depression going on. Obviously, I'm assuming the grief was bothering you. Well, Maybe your father I didn't have, Oh, so he just assumed that because your well, father died. Yes. Well, see, I was having depressive episodes. I guess I would call it. I, I wasn't depressed, but I was. I had it, it screwed up my hormones so bad at oh. it. I was all out of whack. I mean, they're put to a point where I would just walk into the hall. It was dark and I would just sit and cry. And, or my daughter, I mean, she was a year old and I would just, she'd ask me, mom, will you put my hair up? And I'd just snap at her. And that's not me. And I switched doctors, got the deal yanked out. And you're like, yeah, that's what it was. Two weeks later, I'm happy, go lucky and great. Yeah. But I still had a weight problem. And 
you know, I started gaining weight and it took me 10 years battling my weight and battling hormones to get everything back right. right. I mean, it, it, yeah, it's been a, it was a battle. That was from 2010 years. to 2020. You're talking about the 10 years where you, you got your weight under control. And then, oh. uh, but when you started doing carnivore was 2020, right? Well, see, no, I battled my weight for 10 years. I was heavy for 10 years. From um, I had tried counting calories. I had tried, um, my doctor, my new doctor, my current one, she told me, well, go low carb. Um, so I went low carb that didn't work. Counting calories that just made me hungrier. I tried paleo that worked for 10 pounds. And then I gained 20, oh. uh, keto, yeah, keto worked, but I started, I was like, I told my husband, I was like, I must be having um, digestive issues because I can't go to the bathroom. So I got off of keto. I didn't really know that much about keto at the time. I quit it. We tried the Mediterranean diet. Nothing worked. And it wasn't until my husband, the end of like the summer of 2020, mm-hmm. um, I finally decided, I'm like, you know what, I I'm going to go back. I'm going to go. I'm going to lose the weight. Got on the treadmill. I started counting the calories. I was at a good deficit. I was staying active and I almost blew my left knee. I was in the ER with x-rays. And so all that weight that I, I think I had lost 15 pounds. I gained all that back. And Mm -hmm. my husband, he, he works 12 hour shifts. So he's laying in bed one night. He's like, uh, Hey, you need to come here and watch this. What are you talking about? Because I got a video I want you to watch. And it was Ken Berry. Ah. And he's like, we got to watch. I was like, you know what? We're big meat eaters. I I think I want to try this. And uh, that's when I started losing my weight. I wasn't working out. Other than farm work, I was active here on the farm with the kids, but I wasn't lifting weights. I wasn't walking. I was losing weight like crazy. And within a year, I lost 130 pounds. But um, when I was 19, I suffered with bulimia. Uh, All of my friends, you know, I had friends that just are the girls I was around. I didn't feel pretty. I always felt big. I was 130 pounds. I was strong, very built, but I didn't feel pretty like the rest of the girls. And... I wanted to lose the weight. I wanted to be skinny like them. Man, I was stupid for one. And well, when I hit about 160 from losing my weight, I was really wanting to hit that 130 goal. Well, the closer I got to 130, the more I wanted to be 130. I put myself at too hard of a deficit yeah. in with carnivore. And ever, you know, I ended up suffering from the eating disorder again. Then it was like, you know, I had family members going, you need to quit the diet and you need to go back to eating regular foods. And, and that, you know, and I had already said, you know, I want to use carnivore to get my weight off, but then I want to be able to go back to eating like everybody else. You know, I don't want to say, oh, I can't have this. I like sweets. I wanted to go back. You know, I wanted to be able to eat sweets again. Right. Except by allowing myself to go back, it threw me off the wagon. Yeah. And it, it liked to really messed me up. I lost, I still, I've, I haven't had a cycle in a year. Um, I dropped to a hundred and yeah, I still, I'm, thinking. yeah. Um, okay. it's been about, I think it was October of last year when the eating disorder hit again. Uh, and I have been, I battled it for about eight months and my husband's the one that helped me come out. He I murdered our scale. I don't own a, a scale anymore. So I couldn't even tell you what I weigh now. Oh, you say last... you murdered it. He, he destroyed it. I think you said. In the... Oh yes. He brought it outside <laughs> and it, he shattered it. It is gone. <laughs> well, that's good advice because people ask me all the time about their weight numbers and things like that. And I tell them, first of all, stop looking at the scale. Exactly. It's not your friend. <laughs> no. And see, and, and I wanted to be 130 so bad. And I have my son, you know, I've helped, you know, I've worked with him and 
I've tried to help other people. And that's the first thing I tell them. I was like, get rid of your. Oh, one second. Sorry. All coming in. Um, I think your scale is the worst end of me. Because for me, I would I was weighing upwards of six times a day. <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to be 130 so bad, but when I hit 130, I didn't stop. I think the lowest I got was 112. Now that that's not the lowest I've ever been. Um, back in when I was dating my husband, I think the lowest I was was 105, and I looked bad. And he kept telling me, he goes, you know you're looking rough. He said, your eyes are sunk in. He goes, you're looking rough. And it wasn't until he killed the scale that it clicked in my brain. Like, Oh, and when was that, that that happened? That was after uh, you started doing carnivore, but you were oh, so yeah. on the scale. I see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I wanted to lose the weight and I wanted to hit my goal. But when I hit my goal, cause you know, by then I had already went back to the carbs and now it was, I was eating carnivore but I'm also dealing with an eating disorder again. Right. So I was back on the carbs. I was allowing myself the sweets. Well, for me, I can't do that. And it wasn't until I finally really figured that out that, hey, you have to have a restrictive diet. I have to follow carnivore because if I follow carnivore and I do it right, I'm good. I don't, I don't have urges. I'm not hungry. Like right now, I actually switched from a high protein carnivore to high fat. And when I switched high fat, it's like, oh, wow. My sh I was getting more strength, which I've gained weight. Um, and in the past two months, I've been doing kettlebell. I've gained strength. I was with my mom this last weekend, deer hunting, and helping her move stuff around. And she even made a comment. She goes, oh, my gosh, you've gotten stronger. And I have, you know, I'm back. I still can't lift what I used to could, but I'm getting a lot of my strength back. And I, it's, it's scary to see where I was. I can relate to a lot of your story, even though, you know, I didn't have the problem with having children and all that, but even, even the part about trying to relate to your peers in high school, um, because uh, I was always a heavy uh, child not always, but I was the husky pants wearing kid, you know, the kid that had to wear the trash bag when I was in the football team, in second grade, running around the track, you know, those type of things. And that lingered with me all through high school. So I know how frustrating it can be when you feel like you're not quite where that, where everybody else is. And it, it can be hard on a, a young person's mind. And when you go into adulthood with that type of anxiety over, you know, your appearance and things like that, it, it can carry a long way and cause those issues to really sink in. Like you talked about with the bulimia and things like that. And it can, and say, so my son, he is six, he's six, three, I think. Um, and he's maybe 120 pounds. So wow. he's, he's a little bit, he's a little bitty fella. Um, but he's, he's suffered from the same thing. Yeah. So, um, but I've been there to help him. Huh. And it's like, okay. And I told him, I was like, babe, if you ever go back, it, it's, it's hard to stop. And he's, he's seen me go through it this last time. So yeah. is my daughter. My daughter's 13. And, you know, me and my husband, we've been married for 16 years. And he's, he's seen me at my best. He's seen me at my worst. And he, you know, as my whole family has actually really come together to really help. And he's like, he understands now where I come from. Like for him, he can't do strict carnivore. Um, he tried to do, he tried to go on it with me when I was bigger to lose the weight. And it actually caused him to have meat aversion. Um, yeah, he still. I've heard of some people having that. And see, for me, it just made me like meat even more. Yeah, me I too. Went, <laughs> uh, and before carnivore, I didn't, I liked my meats pink. And now it's like the rawer I can get them, the better I even like them. And it's weird because you, your taste change and he's looking at me like, you're weird. I can't do this. And my daughter looks at me like, mom, that's raw. <laughs> but yeah, Woo, sorry, it's getting a little chilly. What's the temperature uh, out there in Texas? Is that where you are? Uh, it was 38 this morning. I think it's in oh. its 40s right now. 
Yeah, that's that's what it was when I woke up this morning, 48 degrees. Now it's 75 outside, so it goes from cold to hot super fast here in Florida. I know it does there in parts of Texas, too, though. You must be further oh. north. Uh, northeast. Okay. We're outside Dallas. So. Well, when you watched uh, Dr. Barry, I know he does a lot of keto talk, and he's very strong on plant-based, but he kind of goes back and forth letting you know a lot of information about both. Uh, what was it that he said specifically, I guess, what, was there something that you heard that just made you go, this is it? No, it will more or less him talking about, you don't, don't weigh your foods, you know, don't worry about, you know, counting your calories. Don't worry about, you know, how much you're eating. You just eat until you're full. Right. And I'm like, well, that's what I want. I want to be able to eat. I don't like to count anything. I don't, right. <laughs> if I have to do math, I'm done. It's it's over. I, I'm not going back to school over a diet. You know, I just want to eat. I just want to go, okay, you tell me what to eat. I eat this. I lose weight. Yeah. And well, and it, and I, I really can't say I was carnivore starting out because I ate chili for six months. I ate chili. I craved it. That, and I you had ate it sugar. with your other meats or you no, only ate chili? Pretty much only ate chili. After uh, watching I mean, Dr. Barry. Yep. Well, I would eat steak and chicken and pork and I still ate meat, but I craved certain things. Like for, there was two weeks, I ate nothing but chili. And now I didn't put tomatoes in it. I did use sugar-free ketchup just to kind of give it, you know, a thickener, right. but it was broth, bone broth, beef and seasonings. And so I really can't say I was actually carnivore. I was more ketovore because I didn't eat plants. I wasn't eating fruit. I didn't eat vegetables, but, and like now I still season my foods, but he, I don't know the simplicity of the whole of carnivore is what really appealed to me yeah. I, and then seeing that i can just eat and not feel restricted and i can and what was baffling me and i told my husband said so this is driving me nuts because how can i go to bed so full i can hardly move and i wake up in the morning and i've lost two pounds <laughs> like, I, I don't get it i'm yeah. like, i'm eating more food than i ever have but i'm losing weight i how how does this work and you know it and it does yeah and i honestly feel better i'm 37 i feel better right now than i did when i was 17 i mean i'm I, 50 I, and i could say the same thing that's the amazing <laughs> thing <laughs> yeah and i mean it's i have more energy and since i've went high fat and other than I do season my meats, I don't, I don't use a lot of condiments anymore. No ketchup, no sauces. Well, I do use sauce. I like my Chalua. I do, I do use my Chipotle Chalua. Hot sauce. But yeah, I I do like my my pepper sauces, and I don't use a lot of them. And I use a li little bit of dairy. But I recently have cut out cheese. Yeah. I eat a ton of butter, and a a little bit of sour cream and it's like the turnaround has been completely different so in the past two months so it's it's been it's nice well it's always great to hear about the, the information that other people have gone through because i know all of our experiences are different that's one of the reasons I, I mention on my channel all the time even though i do a lion diet which is very restricted even for a carnivore mm -hmm. diet to ruminant meat water and salt and I've added a couple of things back since then, but I mean, literally only eggs and occasionally I, I still have butter, even though I have my doubts as to whether I'm digesting it properly. Um, I had, uh, I have one of these uh, healthy gut tests done. And the only enzyme that I was short of was something for processing lactose. So it, it may be causing me some issues with the butter, but the eggs have been good for me too. But um, people will, want me to preach that lion diet's the only way to go and i say why would i do that i'm saying it worked for me if your situation was similar to mine it might work for you but we're not all in the same boat and sometimes i think when you're struggling with weight you are going to be struggling with some other health health issues of course 
But when you when you're focused on the weight side, I think there's a lot of options out there that can get you into the shape that you've gotten into and the shape that I've gotten into. It's just a mattering of, fi of finding what works for us. Exactly. And I'm, I'm glad and so you found what works for you. And, you know, and that, say my mom, she's tried a uh, carnivore um, and she, it drove her crazy because she wanted to lose a, a little bit. It was getting close to summer. And I told her, I said, you can lose 10 pounds just in two weeks. Just <laughs> give it a go. She called me a week later. She was mad. She goes, what the hell are you talking about? I've gained six pounds. Give it another week. And that next week she comes and she goes, well, I lost the six pounds. And I'm like, oh, you did? She goes, yeah, and the 10, you told me I'd lose. So I'm like, <laughs> see? See? And to see, like, my husband, he's, he has changed, he changed his diet about a month or two ago. And he went for, he totally cut out all processed stuff. The right. only thing processed, yep, the only thing processed he eats now is pork rinds. And now he will eat the occasional, um, corn tortilla but see like tortillas do not bother him but um i'm a i'm a baker i love to bake breads and stuff for the kids because and the people at you know my people at the church they like me to bring yeast roll you know rolls and stuff so i like to bake even though i don't eat it i like to bake it and he told me he's like you gotta quit baking all that he goes because i'm gaining weight yeah so <laughs> he cut out all processed foods and he went um pretty much meat and fruit he eats a little bit of vegetable but he eats a lot of fruit and he's like uh i'm losing weight and yeah. that works for him but mm -hmm. see for me and i will crave fruit but when normally i can tell when i'm craving fruit my something's off it might be my um either it's a vitamin that I'm low on or it's my fat. I haven't had enough fat or protein. And if I just eat, I'm fine. But yeah, see, I, I don't think I could do the meat and fruit and it works really well for him. Right. Yeah. So. Dr. Dr. Saladino does something similar to that and that works for him too. So like I say, everybody's a little bit different. I don't think we're all exactly the same, but I think the part about eating meat has been a big part. That's very similar for all of us. Yeah. Because of the way our stomach is designed, it's not designed to separate out all the toxins and the, the plant material and things like that to give us the, the, the nutrients we need without the things that bring us down, too. Um, but some people do better with it. You know, I think maybe it was because I tried a little of everything in my diet that could have caused me to have such an issue that when I eat anything that has plant material in it, it causes me to have indigestion or problems with digestion that are very uncomfortable, um, problems with going to the bathroom later, you know, it, and in general, it can affect my mood when my gut's oh, out. Yeah. As you well know, you know, even when you were dealing with just the hormonal issue, I can even relate to that because I had some testosterone issues a few years ago before I started doing this. And now I don't have any of that, you know, testosterone medicine or any other medicine anymore. And, you know, I'm 50 years old. I figured I was supposed to have a bunch of medicines by now, especially since I ran a retirement home and saw how many medicines a lot of these folks are on by the time they get there in their 50s, uh, some of them in their 60s, 70s and 80s, too. But then I would see people that were close to 100 that took hardly any pills. Mm -hmm. And I would think there's something about this medicine that ain't jiving well with whether or not it's going to make us healthy or not. Uh, so it's nice to be off of it. And I, I guess you're, you're not having to take any medicine for anything no. now or I don't, uh, I was lucky enough to never have to be on medications. That's good. Um, I, so, and I actually go to a low carb specialist here in Sherman, Texas. Um, is Dr. Maybury. He's, he's got a YouTube channel. Um, and I started going to him when my doctor did my blood work because she called me after she, and this has been about a year ago. She was freaking out. And my cholesterol, of course, is high. Um, I think my, I'd have to go back and find my paperwork. Um, I think my overall cholesterol was 400. Oh. And I can't remember if it was my LDL or HDL. One of them was 400. And she wanted to send me to a cardiologist immediately everything else was great but i went to this 
Dr. Mayberry, and he's like, oh, you're you're healthy as a horse. He goes, you're perfectly yeah. fine. And it had said, to be your LDL the then, because if your HDL yeah. was that high, he wouldn't have said that. It has yeah, to be a I, little well, bit high, but. When it comes to all that, I'm like, you just tell me, am I healthy or not, you know? And he told me, he's like, I can send you right now to go have your, have you scanned? He goes, and you will come back and you will be perfect. He said, you are, he said, you're just one of the ones that has high cholesterol. Yeah. You know, being on carnival just pushed my cholesterol. And it's weird because I see so many people talking and they're like, oh yeah, my, being on carnivore has lowered my cholesterol and all my levels are perfect. And I'm over here going, well, hell, all mine's going up. Yeah. But, you know, and I've watched um, quite a few of the carnivore doctors on YouTube and they'll talk about it. And like, you know, just for certain people, it goes up. Yeah. It's just the way, you know, our bodies process. And, but yeah, I'm, it's, did you ever get any of those uh, body scans like they recommended or suggested? Oh. I'd like to do something like that someday, get the cartoid artery scan or something like that. But I mean, it's like you say, when you feel energy and vibrance, when you're used to feeling like everything is just trudging to get through and you get to the end of the day and you can't sleep at night because you're all anxious and worried about everything that you didn't get done that day. Um, it's not a comfortable way to live. But oh, I know it's, it's when, not. When I lay down my head at night, my as soon as my eyes close or as soon as my pit, head hits the pillow sometimes, I'm out. And I never used to have that. Before this diet, I, I could be up all night long until four in the morning or even when the sun comes up and then I'm finally ready to go to sleep when I got to go to work. It would take me two hours to go to sleep. Yeah, and when I'm you can feel that difference between feeling that awful the feeling this good telling me that some numbers on a scan are going to make a whole lot of difference doesn't mean a lot to me not a scan but a blood check um i get a lot of people that that ask me that, that they want to know what the blood numbers are and I, get I, don't even, I don't think about them as much as i used to but i understand why people do because it's what we're told that that's the marker but the more I have investigated what the numbers mean, and when I ask the doctors to explain this to me, why is this high and you're not worried about it? Why is this one low and you're not worried about it? And they don't really always have a, well, this plus this equals this. They kind of fuzzy around and him and haw, and the next thing you know, you still don't know what the answer to your question was. Um, yeah. So I think there's, it's like interpretation. Whoever's interpreting the, the results is going to decide whether or not you're you're hearing the truth or you're hearing something that's a little bit skewed. Um, but yeah, blood work numbers can can be uh, be worrisome. But I don't know. I guess I'm. I just I, I wanted to focus on that for a second because a lot of people ask about it, and I think they're not as important as you think they are. But at the same time, it's good to get checked on those things that you are worried about. Like I see my EGFR getting better as I as I go up. The numbers keep increasing. Where my doctor was originally a little bit worried about my kidneys um, before I started the diet, but after I started the diet, all he said was they're getting better. They're getting better. They're getting better. So. There is some good information to be found in there. I think when it comes to LDL, HDL, triglycerides, your overall lipid panel, there is so much old information and new information and people that still only have the old and people that still only have the new or have the new and the old. And it really depends on which one you go to is whether or not you're going to get a, a good answer on uh, cholesterol. Exactly. And so many doctors, they don't know, you know, and it's, it's what they're taught. You know, you have your cholesterol is this, they, we got to fix that. Right. And, and see, in my, my gynecologist, she actually called Dr. Mabry, I do believe, and let him explain everything to her, which I applaud her for that. You know, even though, you know, she just, but she still wanted to push eat the rainbow. We joked last time I seen her. I told my husband, he's like, well, what'd she say? I'm like, she told me to go on the Skittles diet. <laughs> he went to laugh and he's like, what? I'm like, she told me to eat the rainbow. I said, I guess I'm going to Skittles. Yeah. And which, you know, no, she wasn't telling me to eat Skittles, but, and cause you know, I told her, I was like, you know, I crave if when I eat other things, I crave the high carb stuff. 
we know where high carb leads me. It leads me to gain weight. It leads me back into eating disorders. And she's like, but you need to eat that. Eat, you need to eat the, the whole grains, you know, whole grain rice. And this was going against everything she told me when I was big. I mean, she's the doctor that told me, okay, well, you need to get, start, try to start intermittent fasting, go low carb. I started intermittent fasting because of her. And that works. I still intermittent fast to this day. I've been intermittent fasting for sh probably six years. Um, and I, which I do it naturally now. I eat at seven and I finish eating at 12. I'm not hungry. Yeah. I just don't want food. If I am hungry, I eat. If I'm not, I, you know, Saturday or no, what is today? Today's Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday. I'm sorry. This has been a crazy, this has been a crazy week. So, you know, Wednesday we get the phone call. My mother-in-law is in the hospital. I hadn't eaten. I had a coffee that morning with a scoop of collagen. That's 35 calories. I had a bang. I went to bed with 35 calories in my system, which, you know, I, that's gone. I would tell my husband, I'm not hungry. I make him his, bre his breakfast and lunch to go to work the next day. I go to bed. I wake up and I'm still not hungry. And it's like, eh, yeah. Have you ever and tried any without the caffeine? No. Carnivore without caffeine. It's amazing how much how much better it is that I have um, found personally. I don't know. Some people may be different, but it is amazing. I was able to quit caffeine too, and that's that's been amazing. I've I have been drinking bangs all through my carnivore journey. Um, I've only recently actually added coffee back, and. The coffee has actually helped me wean back on because I was at times drinking two bangs a day. I only drink, I drink one and normally I drink, and if I do, I normally drink it in the evenings, like with my last meal, just to give me something. Cause I, and then I was drinking um, Propel here recently. I only figured out I can't drink Propel. Uh, no, water. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I cannot chew gum. Especially that I can chew the regular sugar gum. I cannot chew sugar-free gum. I bloat. It's the sugars in it. Um, I drink the uh, sugar-free syrups, like the uh, Jordan Skinny syrups in my coffee. And I've been noticing, hmm, I think there's something in the syrup I can't handle. And the more that I'm on, the longer I'm on carnivore, especially now that I've went more high fat, I can tell I don't crave the sweet as much as I was craving it now because I've cut my stevia in half recently I've cut the amount of the sugars the sugar-free syrups in half so I, and I've started trying to wean myself back but it's like it's cold right now and I really don't want to give up my coffee <laughs> I understand completely on that I don't know if you watched any videos where I talk about coffee but I had a, a love-hate relationship with it myself where I didn't do it at all in the first seven or eight months of the diet, but then I tried to bring it back in because it was getting cold and I had lost a lot of weight. So the cold was even more cold and yeah. I missed that nice, hot, steamy cup to warm up with in the morning. Surprisingly, I've been able to find that hot water and a little salt does just fine for me. Uh, as crazy as that sounds, even to me to say now, it's... It really does the trick to get to that warm up, but I'm not here to try to tell you how to do anything or what to get rid of or anything like that. I would just like to suggest read the ingredients on that bang before you have another one and look into what they are because oh, I have. <laughs> I think that's the thing that we do as a, as a society is we're not. Your doctor points out eating the rainbow, but. The rainbow isn't what the rainbow used to be. If you're talking about, no. if you had natural food sources to choose from, whether they were animal or vegetable, they weren't filled with all the garbage we have in our food today. And back when we first started seeing that kind of stuff coming into our foods in the last century, you know, it was a little here and it was a little there, but even when it was a little, we knew this is substandard. This isn't the quality of what we're used to. 
But as our exactly. lives picked up speed and we had more things to do, and then mom started going to work because dad was already at work, and then the kids go to work, everybody's working all the time. Who's got time to stop and make anything to eat? So we get to where we're just stuffing our faces with whatever we can grab our hands on as it's flying by, it seems like. So it the rainbow when it's like that is definitely going to lead to the same path that you wound up at. Being selective is a big part of, I think, what, what you've been able to do to make it so good for you. And it probably makes it more comfortable for you socially a little bit, too, because you can mix in with people some. On my diet, it's hard to really mix with anybody and, and talk about food. So I just try to have my own carnivore crisps or something with me when we're at a party or something like that. And they may ask about it, but unless they're really looking to find out answers instead of judging why I'm eating meat all the time, <laughs> uh, I just leave the talking about food aside and then we can have a uh, fellowship together, you know? Well, see, and I guess I'm really fortunate there because my whole family is really supportive of my diet because they've seen how much it has helped me. Um, and a lot of my family doesn't, my mom, we've recently talked about the eating disorder from the past. It's something I've never talked about. Even to my husband, he's the one that pulled me out of it the first time. He's the one that helped pull me out of it the second time. That, and it was kind of like my body telling me enough is enough. You're done. Just stop. And so getting, you know, my, between my family helping me and it's, so, but, but even not with the eating disorder, they, they're just really supportive that like my mom's boyfriend, we're down this last weekend, or I am and my daughter and we're hunting. He wants to, and he knows I don't eat vegetables. He's got steaks and ribs. And I mean, it was a carnivore heaven, hey, little one. but sorry, I got a visitor. <laughs> um, so, and, and it's nice. My mom will forget every now and then. And she's like, okay, well, here's you a baked potato. And it's like, mom, she goes, oh, shoot. And I, she'll laugh. And it's like, she goes, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, it's fine. She still hates to eat if I don't eat. Yeah. She's like, are we eating in front of them? I don't care. But like for Christmas and Thanksgiving, everybody, no one says anything to me anymore. That's they're good. just, you know, it's, they're supportive. And so that I, I have to say I'm very, very fortunate there, but it is, it is nice to have the coffee and the bang, especially when I go in for like the big get togethers, because it gives me something besides water. And cause a lot of times I do not like tap water at all. Uh, especially if it's highly chlorinated type yeah. tasting, it's just, it's nasty. I've always loved water, but I don't like tap. Well, when I go home, if I don't take water, I, that's all I have. So I like, I can drink the coffee. So that gives me something else besides drinking nasty tap water. So, and it, you know, it just, it just gives a different flavor. Yeah. Well, I understand that. Well, I've only got about 30 seconds left before I got to end <laughs> this and move on to something else. Is there anything right. you would like to offer to the, people who would be watching this to help them take the plunge uh listen to your body don't listen don't listen to everybody do what you eat. and i, I, I don't mean that <laughs> no and I, I don't mean anything like that listen to your body take what take all of our experiences learn from us but do what's best for you extra could we maybe get some grease or fat